Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. I have as my guest today the Honorable Mike Brogan, the National Director for Skyco Shading and Retro Solar. What we're going to be talking about today is cutting edge technology that keeps the sun's heat out of windows while allowing a good view of the outdoors and we're going to talk a lot about why that good view to the outdoors is very very important and then one of my pet hobby horses is the fact that those controls for shades that go up and down on windows absolutely positively must be motorized and guided by sensors why because i do a lot of walking through buildings looking through for energy saving technologies and the architect has gone to great pains to have these very very nice shades going over windows so they're closed when the sun's glare and the sun's heat is coming in and guess what those shades stay closed all day all night all everything you might as well not even have a window there i see it in so many applications so when I help to write energy codes, as I do, this is an energy code that is coming to Hawaii very near and very close to you. We made certain that daylighting is mandatory and it is driven by sensors. It technology is. And that brings me directly into perhaps one of the world's most advanced energy or saving window shading devices with uh, Mike Brogan who just got back from Germany a little bit of uh, jet lag here where he attended the world's largest window coloring window shading conference why don't you start Mike by, by telling us a little bit what about what you saw in Germany there well it's very interesting you know, thank you for having me first of all mm -hmm. um, it's very interesting because these other countries around the world that are displaying there uh, do cater to the U.S., but really what they're looking for is advanced products, products that can help our buildings save energy. And to that point, most of the products are exterior or they're light mm -hmm. controlling. Uh, we are still in the infancy of this, and mm -hmm. we're doing roller shades with heavy automation. Uh, it works, and as you pointed out, we need to do that. Uh, but they use products where they don't, can get rid of the heavy wiring in the buildings for these products because these, uh, again, contribute to the uh, carbon footprint of a building, and they can reduce that. So a lot of the products are louvers, um, interior and exterior louvers. Uh, there was, of course, many uh, new fabrics brought to our attention that also control energy. Mm -hmm. And as we go through our slides, we can talk about some of those. Yeah, yeah. And just to give the audience a clear understanding of what we'll be uh, launching into, I pay or, or direct our attention to my dentist's office. I always have an early morning appointment with my dentist, and he's in the Ola Moana building, and he faces east, which is the morning sun. So you've got the sun coming through, but everything's nice and cool. There's no heat coming through. There's no glare, but you can see through the shaded product. And you can see, for instance, there's all this construction going on. I can see the cranes moving, the construction guys moving around. So you have a pretty darn good view, but again, no glare, no heat. And then as the sun rises, 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 up comes the shade and you have your full window again. That, that is the type of technology that we're going to be uh, talking about. And that, boom, ba boom, ba boom, up, that is guided by a light sensor. When the, a certain amount of light goes away, boom, it triggers a little motor that uh, right, raises, raises the shade. Why don't you get us started, Mike, with uh, what, what your uh, products are all about here? Well, uh, I think we have our first slide, um, and I wanted to just talk about some of the uh, principles first. Um, of uh, When we're doing uh, facade 
solar control and daylighting. Mm -hmm. What people don't realize is they're really we're going in a situation where you have uh, contrary things here. Uh, if you just let in all the daylight, you let in all the heat and all the mm -hmm. glare. So you want a daylight harvest and simultaneously control the solar heat gain on the building. So one, we're reducing the AC. Two, we're, re we're harvesting that daylight. Uh, in this, we have to remember we have glare control. This is a comfort. If people aren't comfortable, of course, they close the product and then we lose the ability to daylight, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, as you have mentioned in your opening statement. Uh, other things is visibility out. More studies have shown that visibility to the exterior improves the uh, health and happiness mm -hmm. of the people interior. And so what we want to do is we want to try to do these things simultaneously. Uh, in the second slide, it kind of shows you how we progress to this stage. Uh, in the second slide, we have, um, you know, uh, different control methods that we've tried in the past. Some of them are uh, poorly used. Uh, we, we've done exterior light shelves, for example. Um, and, and the problem with them is they're static. Mm -hmm. So we live in a, a, you know, as you said, the sun moves across the sky here. So mm -hmm. uh, as that happens, these uh, static light shelves become less of a, a, a function for the building. And then the glass is exposed to direct solar irradiation. Mm -hmm. And at that point, it starts to heat our buildings, which is why we have to turn on the AC. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the many reasons why we have additional cooling for our buildings. Uh, we've done other things. We did dark glass. Uh, you'll see more buildings are designed today, of course, with lighter colored glass. Mm -hmm. And we know that dark glass does two things against us. One, mm -hmm. it brings heat to our building, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of what we're trying to do. And the other thing it does is it cuts half or more of our daylight transmittance. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to daylight harvest, Dark glass or tinted glass is the opposite effect. Mm -hmm. So again, another contrary indicator. Uh, we've done mirrored buildings, and I still see them in Honolulu, and they're mm -hmm. still going up mm -hmm. to this day. And, and the problem is multifold on mirrored buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the problems, major problems, is, is it um, redirects light into our cities a lot of times, and they become nuisance buildings. Mm -hmm. And nuisance buildings uh, create other havoc within our environment. But when you have a, a mirrored glass building, you do send the solar radiation away. So yes, you've uh, made your building cooler, but you also send all your light away, which mm -hmm. means you're not going to harvest the daylight. Mm -hmm. And again, we're going to be in better shape with the dark glass and the mirrored glass. So again, both are contrary to daylight harvesting. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other thing would be, we've done these mini blinds and manual shades, which you referred to as, it's not the products, um, inability to do its job, it's our inability to control mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And this is why we go to motorization. And, uh, you know, motorization will, will help take that out of our hands and put it into the hands of, of a building management mm -hmm. system. These are very simple today. Uh, they used to be quite complex. But uh, as we move forward, they, they, you know, everything's getting simpler in these type of uh, uh, applications. Uh, they're, built into the intranet of the building, so basically building management can control mm -hmm. any shade from mm -hmm. any floor and, you know, check its responses and make sure that everything's working properly. And these are done very easily today as opposed to the older way where we used to do them much more difficult. So mm -hmm. this is a great improvement and we're really looking forward to uh, seeing people implement more of these and making our buildings more efficient. Yeah. Let me interject a little bit of uh, window terminology here. One is VLT, visible light transmittance. And that compares the, if uh, uh, let's say a window that is utterly, totally clear, you would have almost 100% of the view out there vi visible to your eyes in the interior. And so we measure any window technology in terms of point something. 1.0 would be absolute visible light transmittance, but every window technology has point something. And these dark windows that you mentioned, I think they go down around 0.3 or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Really, really low. And then with regard to 
the sun striking your conventional old-fashioned windows, because you, you were just talking about old technologies. Mm -hmm. In my own building, I won't mention which one it is, downtown Honolulu here, I have, I have what's called a heat gun. You point it at something and you shoot a laser and it re reflects the temperature. I once got at 9.30 in the morning on an east-facing window, 126 degrees. And this is what's called a commercial grade window. It's thick. That's correct. It's supposed to be not doing that, but it absolutely it does do that because, it, because it's old. You can stand five feet away from that window and feel the radiant heat. So number one, you're uncomfortable. Number two, the AC is just working like mad. So those, you, you were referring to kind of the bad old days. Yes, yeah. yes. But they still yeah. exist, mm -hmm. and we still have to be ever vigilant to get them out of our buildings. Uh, uh, we're hard to take change in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I hate mm -hmm. to say that, but I find that to be a problem. And what we want to do is encourage people to look at these things. You know, those temperature guns that you mentioned are very inexpensive. And mm -hmm. I really encourage architects, for example, designers, uh, one of the stories I often tell is about um, roller shave fabrics. You know, we have several roller shave fabrics today, and they will put these roller shade fabrics in a window. Now, the architect can do the best job on the glass you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Choose the right one, and somebody will put this fabric in the window, and we have a dark building again. <laughs> and this fabric, believe it or not, will go to about 130 degrees in your room. Now, this is inside the building. Uh, yeah. So, you know, where the white fabric below it here will go to 26 degrees. Now, which would you rather chill over room temperature? 26 degrees mm -hmm. would be much mm -hmm. better than about 113 over your average 70 degree room temperature. Mm -hmm. So these fabrics, like this white, are better. But we don't always use white because white, because you mentioned glare. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens is, is white is hard to see through. You want to maintain visibility out. What happens is white reflects back at your eyes, mm -hmm. and this allows you uh, doesn't allow you to see out. But you do the darker fabrics or warmer colors, and you get more mm -hmm. visibility out. So to compromise, you have to you have to go to things like these silverback fabrics. Now these type of fabrics again are going to control the solar radiation, mm -hmm. and then give you more visibility out and the comfort within. And you'll see they even do this silver backing on white fabrics. Mm -hmm. And the reason, again, for this is not because it's a better energy control than the white, but because it allows us to see out and blocks the glare coming in. Mm -hmm. And so these silver fabrics, um, back fabrics, are for energy control as well as comfort. And they've made a great strides in the U.S., and they've been around the world for a long time. And there's many manufacturers. So there's no shortage on finding these products. Mm -hmm. And they will change your energy model considerably. Yeah. And that brings me to the subject of daylighting in general. Or were mm -hmm. you going to cover that later in, in some well, detail? I think or? we have another slide. Uh -huh. and if we can look at the third slide, I'll, yeah. I think we were prepared to oh, talk okay. about daylighting and sunlighting. Yeah, well, um, let me, this is one of my favorite topics, is oh, mine daylighting. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lady who I've had the good fortune to get to know is Lisa Heshong, out of the Heshong Group in Northern California. And she started looking at the effect of daylighting on school kids. Mm -hmm. And she took Group A, which had very, very poor uh, access to the outdoors, to viewing the outdoors, and very little daylighting coming in. And she measured the test scores, and she interviewed the teachers, how satisfied, unsatisfied they were. Then she shifted that same group, teachers and students, into a beautifully daylit environment with, again, zero glare, zero heat coming in, and a nice view of greenery outside. Those students' test scores improved by 20 percent yes and you know, with the uh, our department of education we keep saying how can we improve students environment how can we do it how can we do it answer one is access to daylighting but again we need control so that yes. the daylighting comes just at that time
Yes. And and we're beginning to that that was those were the initial studies. Now we're looking at office productivity, even factory productivity yes. across the board. The more studies we do, the more we find that people benefit from from daylighting. Yeah, I believe my next slide shows some of those statistics. Um, well, wait a minute. We're looking at motorization, which is what oh. we were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, I want to just touch on this. When we come mm -hmm. to this motorization before we get into this daylighting, uh, one of the things we didn't touch on is the fact that it's not unique to any product, any one mm -hmm. product. Mm -hmm. We can motorize drapery for hotels, so mm -hmm. they, again, mm -hmm. are part of the energy model that we need to, especially in Hawaii where we are a hospitality-driven uh, economy. Yep, yep. We must do this, and I think uh, I saw in your latest uh, edition that we're going to go to card key control. And so all these things in our, uh, in our motorization, it doesn't leave any type of building exclusive or out of the picture. We, we want to make sure everybody's participating, mm -hmm. especially here in Hawaii where our energy costs are so high. And then we're talking about natural lighting. Mm -hmm. um, natural lighting is unique from the fact that it comes in two forms. It comes in sunlight and daylight. And you mm -hmm. and I love mm -hmm. daylight, mm -hmm. but we really want to, you know, get rid of that sunlight or control that because, again, as we mentioned, it's a, it's a, one, one causes discomfort, mm -hmm. uh, but the other one makes us healthier and happier. Yeah. Yeah. So as we can control that and balance that, uh, what we're really trying to tr achieve is, is a better, healthier space. And, you know, I think this slide shows that 25% uh, better in office buildings mm -hmm. for uh, health complaints. Schools 20 to 25 percent mm -hmm. better. Uh, this is a worldwide study. Uh, it's improved in certain climates better than others, uh, where they have less sunshine. And we have um, in healthcare. What yeah. could be more important in healthcare than to get health, health healthy vitamins from our, you know, yep. Yep. from our yep. natural light? Mm -hmm. And uh, so around the world, they actually changed the style of their buildings to adopt to natural lighting. Mm -hmm. narrow rooms, everybody gets daylight, and this is uh, called the right to light. And mm -hmm. in Europe, they have mm -hmm. this code. I like that. Yeah. As, we come, as we come into our, um, your code here, you know, we're only a partial step there. As it goes further, we're going to go into what's called the right to light, which means mm -hmm. everybody gets natural light on their work surface, mm -hmm. and everybody gets a view out. Yep. Now, Canada is going to adopt this as well. Uh, they we, haven't already. We need already. to go to a commercial, but okay. let's hold that thought because All right. this is a subject that's near and dear to both our hearts. I yes, can tell it is. That. Back in 30 seconds. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Aloha, yappers. This is your host, Kingsley, for The Yap Show. Every Friday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time, you can catch us here live. Think Tech Hawaii, and then later on we upload to our YouTube channel. We talk about youth issues, policies, uh, youth programs, and how to transition yourself into adulthood. Right. But this was like a sign, I guess. Hey, life's like, hey, <laughs> right. now's your chance to go back to school, which uh, I'm doing. Catch us here again live, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha. Hi, aloha. My name is Chris Leesom, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Okay, we got, ah, we're back. Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green, Hawaii, oh. <laughs> Code Green. Think Tech Hawaii. My guest today is Mike Brogan, National Director, Skyco Shading Systems. And we're talking about how to control 
the heat and the glare that comes through windows while getting as much of a view as we can, getting as comfortable as we can, and getting as healthy as we can. You, you just introduced me to this new concept. I think it's coming from Europe the right to light, Correct. where they're reconfiguring in new buildings, maybe in existing buildings, the access of virtually all workers to at least a partial view of, of a window so that they will have a sense, I think, of, of what time of day it is. There's mm -hmm. certain light in the morning, certain light in the afternoon, and, and so forth. Yeah, the studies show that if you're connected to the outside world, you daydream less. That's why children do better. Mm -hmm. uh, you never take a patient and close them off. You always want to make them connected to the exterior. Of the, you want them to stay attached to the world, so to speak. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. speeds recovery and, and health care. So all of these things work towards a healthier uh, building and a healthier society. Uh, in our, one the next slide, architectural example here, I have a, um, it shows our typical school. On the left, you see a picture of where as you mentioned, the blinds are usually at some mm -hmm. uncontrolled level. Uh, in this case, they're half down to block glare. But they're also trying to save energy. So this is another mistake we make in our mm -hmm. schools. We turn off half the lights. Mm -hmm. Well, we've just created a very dark um, cave environment as opposed to a light, bright environment. On the right, you can see we're using light directing louvers. In this case, you'll see where we have louvers in the glass. Uh, you'll, and then you'll see a section that's open, a couple sections there. Where the sun directly comes in, you have your solar radiation. This is what causes your glare and your heat in your building. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the ceiling above that, it's dark. Well, the light on the floor does you no good at all. What you need to do is get it overhead. Mm -hmm. Then it's coming down from above like all our lighting. And with the louvers that they've used, what they've done is they've blocked the direct sun from coming through, so now we have a comfortable mm -hmm, space. Mm -hmm. They've never been close, so they maintain visibility out at all times, and they've prevented glare in the space. So they did the four principles that we look for that we started off with. It's just a solar control, daylight harvesting, glare control, and visibility out. Mm -hmm. And so they've been dealing with this with the right to light for many decades. So they have the ability to look beyond the typical products we use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's not to say that roller shades won't work. Uh, there's different ways to look at roller shades. Motorized, but there's also other options. How about bottom-up roller shades? Mm. Instead of coming from the top down and blocking your light that you could be harvesting, mm -hmm, bring them from mm -hmm. the bottom up and stop them, get your comfort and your control, and let mm -hmm. the daylight in. So there's always ways to work with the products we yeah. have. Uh, we just fall short of that. I, I think in uh, the next slide kind of shows you how they've done this in this one study. And this particular one was actually done in the Northwest. And in the Northwest, they say, if you can do daylighting, yes. you can accomplish anything. And it's very true. They have very little light. So in, uh, the savings potential is, is, shows up even in the worst uh, daylighting situations. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in this next slide, if we can pull that one up, you'll see that they've done louvers on the top and they've got roller shades underneath. Hmm. This is a combination. There's no one right answer, Howard. Mm -hmm, there, what mm -hmm. we're looking for is what works, what helps us. What, first of all, you've got to make everybody happy. Yep. So we find compromise, but there's no end to uh, the potential here. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. even in this study, they just did a small portion, about 20 to 25 to 30 percent of the window and louvers above to direct light to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they did the roller shades below. And what they found in this study was that at the perimeter of the building, year round, they hardly used any electric lighting. Mm. Now, towards the middle of the room, they already had 60 percent of the lighting balanced to make up for the lack of daylight. But at the back of the room, they used 100 percent mm -hmm. artificial light. Uh, average it, and you'll see that they saved one-third on their energy lighting costs, which is the mm -hmm. second largest consumer in the building. Yep. And remember, when you turn out the lights, the temperature in the room goes down because mm -hmm. lighting is 20% energy mm -hmm. in the form of heat. So even in this case study, this small one here done for a one-year study on, uh, on a building proves that even in the Northwest, you can save a third on your lighting costs, let alone your energy costs in other formats, 
this was just a lighting study. And I believe this building, I think I'm familiar with it, is in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Seattle has the cheapest electricity rate in the yes, entire they. nation because it's basically hydropower. Correct. And look at the dollars they're savings. Mm -hmm. to, I just talked to somebody from Seattle, I think they're paying seven cents a kilowatt hour now. Correct. We are paying over 30 cents a kilowatt hour, so our cost is easily four times theirs. So imagine what Hawaii's energy cost savings would be there. Plus we have the sunshine. Mm -hmm. They do not have that same advantage that we do. Yeah. Yeah. So the savings can be astronomical here. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is not unusual to see over 20 year studies, the savings in the millions of dollars mm -hmm. for a building, um, far, far greater than the cost ever would be to do something like this. In fact, you know, the payback on these are, are quite short mm -hmm. because they really work. Uh, so to me, there's, it's an absolute need to teach people that daylighting is an energy saving resource. Mm -hmm in addition to being a very healthy resource. Absolutely. Yeah. I call those layered benefits. Um, what I mean by that is, is we start out for energy savings, mm -hmm. but then we stack on, oh, well, we get health benefits. Mm -hmm. You know, we stack on other benefits, you know, that people are not just happy and healthier, but they work longer and, and uh, during their day, they're more productive. And throughout the U.S., we find that people uh, when they hate going to work, that changes when they have natural light. They, mm -hmm. they really enjoy their job, where they're at, when they can be exposed to natural light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have much better, we talk in terms of satisfaction. Yeah, retention on, on job. is yeah. up. Yeah. Yes, lots of these things happen to improve our environment. Um, you know, there's other case studies we can go into, um, you know, just to show you how these louver products will pay themselves back. Uh, these are more advanced. These are light directing louvers. Mm -hmm. uh, I have one here, yeah. but light directing louvers, it doesn't matter now. Uh, this study that I, I'll show you is, is very interesting because they did exterior and they did interior. Mm -hmm. And one would think that one would be dominant over the other. In, because we believe that anything you trap the sunlight on the outside of the building is going to improve your energy model. Mm -hmm. And that's true to an extent. But if you have a product and these new products reflect light as light. So when the light comes in our building, if we send it back out of our building, we have not converted it to the energy in the form of heat mm -hmm. within our building. So mm -hmm. this study shows that what we actually do is we end up about even. Now, they take into account uh, mechanicals and wiring and such for um, exterior product must be maintained at a higher level. But we find in many of these studies, if we look at this one here, uh, she'll bring that one up, you'll see that with, with the um, exterior product, what they found is that the product pays itself off in three and a half years. Mm -hmm. But there's a half a year extra in there for maintenance over the long term because you have to maintain exterior product sure. a lot more and it has to be motorized. So then they did in between the glass or an interior product and it paid itself off as well in four years. So those lines look virtually identical. They are. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, is they get a little bit better energy control exterior, but they, you factor in the costs and the maintenance, and they work out even. Mm -hmm. And so they're mm -hmm. almost identical over time. So it really it comes down to it's not the position of the louver mm -hmm. that matters. It's using the type of technology that will divert the light from becoming heat and harvest the light we want. And by turning off the interior lights, second largest consumer, mm -hmm. and turning down the AC, mm -hmm. we now have a building that can be very energy efficient. And this will change what we know about our energy modeling. Mm -hmm. Remember, if it's not automated mm -hmm. or static, mm -hmm. it can't be used in your energy calculations. Yep. And the reason it can't be is what you alluded to is mm -hmm. the fact that we control them, we don't do them properly. We don't. Yes. So to have a product that is static, and in you know this case we actually have... Um, Be before we display that, we need okay. to take another little break. Well, no and problem. And then let's uh, get right into that when we okay, back we'll in a minute. Okay, we'll show that when we yeah. come back. Aloha, my name is Paul Jackson, better known as PJ, and my local interest is in sports. I have my own sports radio show, 
at KWAI AM 1080 that you can stream live. I also have my own website, pjsportsradio.com. We have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the islands. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Sync Tech Hawaii. My honored guest this afternoon is Mike Brogan, National Distributor, Skyco Shading Systems. And we've been over a fascinating array of technology. And at this point, Mike actually has a real live three-dimensional display to, yeah. to show, show to us here. Well, this allows us to talk about how we can control light. Uh, and again, the louvers here in this particular case are in between the glass. And it allows us to see through this, Howard. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, I see. So it never has it, yeah. to be closed because mm -hmm. as the sun strikes the building, it will not come through. But what it will do is it will reflect the light as light back to the atmosphere, mm -hmm. not into our city. And it will send it scattered. This is important because mm -hmm. scattered light will not create a mirrored building. Mm -hmm. It makes a sheen to a building, but not a mirrored building. And so at this point, if we can send the light back out, and then between the louvers, harvest the light we want up to the ceiling and into the space, mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll actually create a, uh, a perfect scenario for daylighting and solar Did control. You want to adjust that for the camera there? Oh, there we go. Let's see which way. There this, we go. Bring it that, in closer there. there. Yeah. And so in this case, we're actually able to use even an improved glass. Remember, we talked about bringing in daylight and tinting glass. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that clear glass is only 83% clear. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. already a deficit to natural lighting. Yep. Go with low iron glass. Low iron glass takes that color out of the glass. Hmm. So now you can maximize your daylighting because it also helps us from the standpoint of reflecting the light back to the atmosphere. So in this way, we get better cooling, passive cooling mm -hmm. potential. Mm -hmm. And then even if we use low E, we move it to the inside. This has two effects, Howard. One, it um, is also on the low iron glass, which allows us to get so much more light into the space, but the low E being on the interior as opposed to the typical location is to the exterior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is because low E is also a tint in a way, and it creates energy, and we want it to radiate out. But since we've already taken care of that with the light radi radiating back to the atmosphere, then we can move it to the inside. Now, when the cold air hits this, the mm -hmm, AC, mm -hmm. it's going to stay in the room instead of migrating through the glass and eventually interacting with the hot air outside. Mm -hmm. So again, it just approves, improves on that AC cooling factor far better in this position, while we're also improving on the light reflectance back out to the atmosphere. To give you an example, the average uh, window unit like this for a commercial building, well, a really good one's about a 0.32. Now, there are some lower ones. Most are much higher. Mm -hmm. This one, say, 0.32, the lower the number, the better. Yep. How about any angle of sun above this uh, at 25 degrees? This is a 0.05. Mm -hmm. So change your energy model. Yep. Um, because the sun moves throughout the day and it'll be variable, what will end up happening is we'll average it for those hours of the day that the sun may be below 25 degrees. Mm -hmm. And this will still be a 0.09 to a 0.1 mm -hmm. average through the whole day throughout the year versus a 0.27. That's almost three times better. Mm -hmm. Two and a half to three times better on the average. Yep. And this is uh, one example of the products used uh, throughout the world. Uh, we have others that they're using uh, technologies that are used in the most energy efficient buildings in the world today. Mm -hmm. Our motorized uh, blinds like this in a double skin facade. And you know, that, that particular building um, to give you an example, uh, uses a point, uh, uses um, 90 kilowatt hours per square meter a year. Mm -hmm. I think in the next slide, I think it, uh, it, it shows, um, uh, perhaps it doesn't. Um, what happens is, is the average building in the U.S. uses 250 kilowatt hours per year. Mm -hmm. That building uses 90. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Because they can control the solar heat gain on the building, they can use geothermal. Now mm -hmm. remember, we once talked about here in Hawaii using salt water, the ocean, to come in and work with our chillers to we're, help we're reduce We're still this. talking about it, it just hasn't gotten anywhere. Well, can yeah. you imagine if you can reduce the solar heat gain mm -hmm. on your building, this makes it quite viable. Yeah. Yep. makes it extremely uh, viable. Mm -hmm. And this is what they're doing around the rest of the world. They're not only building uh, uh, green buildings and energy efficient buildings, but they're using uh, on-site resources. So mm -hmm. these buildings are much more environmentally friendly. And, uh, you know, I've always said you can use as many solar panels as you want to make anything off the grid. Mm -hmm. The key is to make a building so energy efficient, you need very few of them. Precisely. Yep. And you must remember, dark solar panels also heat our environment. So, you know, we want to use them because they have that potential to save energy and they are renewable. But we also want to use them, as anything else, we want to use them in moderation. Mm -hmm. and, and by making more energy efficient buildings, we shouldn't just jump to the solution yep. that will fix it, but find the compromise in between to make this a green building, not yep. just an energy efficient building. Yeah, this is something I tell people over and over and over again. Oh, I'm going to get PVs on my roof. And I ask them, what have you done in your building or your home to reduce the amount of electricity in the first place? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, have you put in Energy Star appliances? Oh, now, you know how much that would cost you? Very, very little. Mm -hmm. Have you put in LED lights? Oh, no, very, very little. So mm -hmm. totally, totally agreed. It's a much more cost-effective method mm -hmm. of reducing our energy use. For one thing, when you reduce energy use like this, you have what's called firm power, or firm lack of power in this case. Mm -hmm. What you're saving at 9 in the morning, you're going to be saving at 5 in the afternoon, whereas with the sun or the wind, you have clouds coming over, you have wind being variable. It's not the same. Energy efficiency in general is a much more valuable uh, yes. technology. Energy efficiency, uh, as you said, like on mm -hmm. a refrigerator, would work uh, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Where a solar panel only works when the sun's out. Yeah. Yeah. Now we can go to wind, but then we have to have wind too. So mm -hmm. the, all these things take a balance, but energy saving appliances and energy saving features in your home work all the time. Mm -hmm. And so we should start there, that and in our buildings, and work towards now how do we power those with renewable mm -hmm. sources. So that to me is important. Um, we have this um, next slide, and I think it already came up once. This was just showing automation throughout the world on, um, in different parts of the world, they, they do these um, tests on using roller shades and automated systems mm -hmm. that you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. And you can see, it doesn't matter what the power consumption is uh, and the price of power, they're saving anywhere from 15, roughly 15%, to 33% of the energy. Why is it vary? Because certain areas, of course, have more daylighting than others. Mm -hmm. uh, but once, once you implement these, um, these sun protection and automated shades, you're going to see that these, these um, programs will help your building not just today, not just tomorrow when they're paid off, but for an indefinite period of time yeah. until that building is decommissioned. Mm -hmm. And so to me, this is where we, we miss the boat. We're, anybody who believes that they're looking at energy today and cost of doing these things today as too much is not thinking 10 years down the road. Absolutely. Because the problem we have is inflation, and inflation is going to cost them dearly. Mm -hmm. They'll be doing the retrofits, um, plus we'll have lost all that energy savings between now and when that retrofit goes in in 10 mm -hmm. years. So to me, that's kind of a negative, and I think we should wake up and do it now and really convince our, our owners of the buildings that this isn't their best benefit. Uh, in their, um, they need to look at it now because in 10 years, mm -hmm. these things are going to be extremely expensive. Uh, we'll be forced to do them as opposed to volunteering and enjoying that savings when the yeah. time comes that they have to be done yeah. before you import them into your little code book. Precisely. Because they yeah. will be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a matter of doing it voluntarily or yes. doing it according to the code. Yes, yeah. and in four yeah. years, they'll be so happy. Five years down the road, they'll be so happy they did this because everything will be paid off and they're just putting the money in the bank. Mm -hmm. 
Let me backtrack for a minute to yes. some uh, numbers you were throwing around. Mm -hmm. You said with these uh, blinds, you could get down to 0 0.9 and 0 0.1. Mm -hmm. And what that refers to is what's called SHGC, Correct. solar heat gain coefficient. That measures the amount of solar radiation heat hitting your window versus compared to the amount that actually gets into the interior space. So the lower the number, the better. The best that we have been able to achieve in this, the latest of the latest of the latest energy codes, and I, I was there as one of the uh, voters and deciders, is 0.25. Mm -hmm. This is really, really high tech window technology. We couldn't have even dreamed of it even t 10, 12 years ago. Right. But you're not talking 0.25, you're talking 0.1. Yes, or less. Yes, or yes. less, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, just amazing. You, mm -hmm. That means even in the hottest time of the day when the sun is striking directly, you can put your hand on that window and it'll be just barely warm. That's correct. Yeah. In fact, the, the Lydex towers, which are considered the most energy efficient buildings, they use a louver technology, um, one I have here, and they use this one stacked in the window in a double skin facade. So they're close mm -hmm. to the exterior. They use low iron glass. They maintain a 0.05 mm -hmm. solar heat gain coefficient year round. Wow. Now, they actually open them up to let some sun in in the winter time to passively mm -hmm. warm. Mm -hmm. So by automating that building, they control it at all times of the day and they can control that solar heat gain. Remember, the higher it is, the more you're gonna turn on the AC. And those dark buildings we looked at were in the 0.556 range. So Mm -hmm. That's astronomical numbers to cool, yep. and when you get down into uh, the two seven range is is doable today. Three two is very common. Two five would be wonderful if we could get there, but it's probably mm -hmm. triple glazing, and a, mm -hmm. and a lot of work to get there. Yeah, uh, but we can do it very simply with standard okay. glazing with a louver in between, down to a point zero five to a point nine. Oh, that's and yeah. again, it's been done worldwide for twenty years. I have slides of uh, buildings um, that were done in 1992 that were doing this type of technology. Wow. So for us to um, you know, look at how we're using our energy, we have to go to these and, and look at it closely. In this yeah. study here, you'll see that, you know, as I brought this one up, this was white box technologies. I, I borrowed this offline. This was a, a, a telling story here. What it shows is they, they looked at multiple um, buildings around the world in different locations and how the cities uh, used energy for their buildings. And as a, ones I've circled there uh, were office buildings, healthcare, and basically general buildings. Mm -hmm. But you might notice the white bars are the U.S. And what they're showing us is that in almost yeah, every yeah, case, yeah. the U.S. uses two to two and a half mm -hmm, times mm -hmm. more energy than any other country in the world. Mm -hmm. And this is because we have this thirst for artificial light and mm -hmm. secondary, this AC demand. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the world will, will use passive cooling mm -hmm. and they'll use uh, natural daylighting. And they'll turn those two things down or off as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you're not only making a healthier building, but you're changing the energy model. And, and believe me, we need to do this. Mm -hmm. it, it's something that we cannot continue to have uh, two and a half times the energy consumption yep. that we have in the rest of the world. Uh, I mean, our in healthcare, if I could get the healthcare people to listen, um, it would be wonderful because in the in the EU, the hospitals use 40% less energy, as mm -hmm. well as having uh, people go home earlier. Mm -hmm. They have fewer medical mistakes. They yep. all around yep. it, it generates a healthier hospital. Just daylighting, and yep. we fail to do these things. We'll change it, Howard, if we have mm -hmm. to pull them along with us. Yep. But this is where we're going, and I, I just hope that people will step up, be part of the, the revolution, and they we're not reinventing the wheel. We're taking mm -hmm. things that we know the rest of the world's done successfully, mm -hmm. and we're just wanting to implement them here. Yep. And on that cheery note, we need to close. Let me just finally say we're headed for a zero net energy economy in Hawaii. We're trying to lead the way and by employing technology like this, our energy use in buildings 
just drops like a rock and people are more productive and healthier. So that does it for this afternoon. Code Green, Think Tech, Hawaii, Mike Brogan, Skyco Systems. Thank you. Thank you very Hal. much.